Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of seizing every opportunity. Most often, people skip out on opportunities and don't recognize them when they appear because they feel they aren't ready to rise to the occasion or that the same opportunity will be available in the future. The truth is, if we don't seize every opportunity, then chances are we're hindering our growth and missing opportunities that could have got us closer to our goals. Every opportunity that arises, whether you win or fail, teaches us valuable lessons and helps us to evolve as a person. Challenges in these situations force us to dig deep within, evaluate and find solutions to solve problems. By seizing every opportunity that comes our way, we propel our success and growth forward and recognize that not every opportunity gets presented twice. One of the biggest misconceptions in life is that we should only take opportunities when we feel most confident or we feel ready. You will never feel 100% ready and there will always be a reason to procrastinate. Recognizing an opportunity and seizing it in the moment is one of the most common traits successful people have. As Wayne Gretzky quotes, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. What's been one of your favorite milestones that you've accomplished so far? Because you've had so many, you have a ton of awards behind you. Let's talk about your favorite milestone and why. Yes, my favorite milestone would be, I would say, you know, there have been several in my career. I'm, I'm lucky. I've had about 13 awards, uh, maybe 14 now, and with like 20 platinum and gold records. So I would say my MTV Europe Music Award, which is right there. Next up on the show, we have singer, songwriter, and producer Carl Wolf. Carl gained worldwide attention with his remake of the hit single, Africa. Carl, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's been a long time. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much. I know we haven't seen each other in like at least a year. Yeah, it's been a while. And with COVID, it's it's pretty crazy out there. Okay. <laughs> so let's let's dive into it. Before you became a successful musician, let's talk about when did you realize that music was your passion and that you wanted to pursue this as a career? Good question. Well, when I was a young boy in Dubai, growing up in Dubai, my mom was a piano teacher. My dad was a musician as he, he played the guitar. We had all kinds of instruments in the house. Um, I wanted to actually be a lawyer mm -hmm. um, and then I loved the entertainment world uh, and, and obviously my whole family was musical so we kind of just had that as a hobby but when I graduated high school, came to Canada um, to further my studies, I, I just from one thing to another I just became uh, a musician I guess it went from, from one audition to the next, I, I kept on getting all the gigs and I started off as a songwriter producer, um, as a professional sold a million records as a producer songwriter and then went into my first solo album which you guys all know Africa was one of the first singles of that album. Yeah I had no idea you grew up in Dubai actually I have lots of family in Dubai I love it there yeah I had no idea did you grow up in Dubai for um, for the majority of your childhood or was it in uh, Montreal? Yeah no I was three years old when we left Lebanon I was born in Beirut Lebanon my parents are both Lebanese and left when I was three because of the civil war there and we fled, went to Dubai. My dad got a job there. I went to high school pretty much all my life until I graduated high school and then came to Canada to further my studies pretty much. And I stayed here ever since. Oh, wow. <laughs> so how has your Lebanese descent kind of influenced your music? Oh man, it was, it was huge at the beginning. I always wanted to separate myself from that. I always thought, you know, people are never gonna like it, especially here in Canada and North America. People are gonna be kind of you know, biased or racist or whatever. I just, mm -hmm. you know, all these things were in my mind. And then at one point I was signed to EMI after I signed, after I had success with Africa. And I remember um, uh, Dean Cameron, the late Dean Cameron, he's passed away now, but he was uh, the president of EMI Records and I was signed to them. And I remember him telling me, cause I had a song called Yalla Habibi. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you know, I was scared to put it out because I didn't think anybody would really like it. Or, you know, it's very, it's got an Arabic title. Why would it even work? He was like, Carl, you have to do it. This is who you are. Let people, you know, if people are, if people will shun you out because of that, then, then that's their problem. He was really an innovator that way. And uh, he gave me the, the, the confidence to put it out. Uh, I put that out and it just went crazy. And ever since then, I've, I've developed kind of my own sound with the Middle Eastern meets Western sound. You know? Yeah. 
I love that. You know, being authentic to your roots, that's what actually creates success is when you're authentic and you're true to yourself. So I, I really love that. You know, you gained worldwide attention with your track, um, Africa. So let, let's talk about that. What kind of drew you to that song and why did you want to remake it? I remember being 10 years old and uh, being in Lebanon. We used to go there for the summers, even though we fled. We would come back every summer when things would calm down from the war. And um, there was a moment I sat, I was with my, my neighbor, my mom's best friend's daughter. And we were, I was 10, she was 13. She was older than me by two, three years, whatever. And I just remember hearing Toto's Africa on the radio and the harmonies and the musical. I, I, just at 10 years old, it blew me away. And I remember that moment because she, it was my first kiss. She gave me my first kiss on the <laughs> cheek. And I was, that my heart just exploded out of my chest. And I could never forget that moment. And I always wanted to share that feeling with everyone when I was older, you know? And, and so I remade the song into a newer dance hall, hip hop, R&B kind of style. And it just blew up, it worked, I don't know. Yeah. Were you surprised by the success of the song? I, I definitely was. I mean, I knew it was a badass song. <laughs> I knew I was doing something different and innovative because at the time, not a lot of people were remaking songs because you know today Spotify is full of remakes mm -hmm. and I think we were one of the first the few you know Diddy was you know he would always remake kind of put samples of his songs and remakes but at the time no one was doing it on a pop level so I guess it just was one of the first and, and I was very surprised I got an award for it I got a bunch of awards for it but I remember being on, on, a, on a show called eTalk and the label gave me my first gold record live on the air. And I was blown away. I was like, this is impossible. It's happening to me. Yeah. It was yeah. Speaking of Spotify, I think I saw on your Instagram, there was a huge billboard with your, um, your album. Yeah. Let's talk about that. That must have been exciting. Yeah, it was for my single uh, Wolf in the Night, my latest yeah. single featuring Cardinal and Fischel. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, man, they gave me the love. I mean, they, you know, Spotify, you know they support me as much as they can they, it, they have, they've never given me a billboard so <laughs> this was the first time i got a huge billboard on dundas square which is like if anybody's watching around the world it's like times square but in toronto and it's massive it was there for a week and just you could see my beautiful face there <laughs> no, i'm joking <laughs> <laughs> what's been one of your favorite milestones that you've accomplished so far because you've had so many you have a ton of awards behind you let's talk about your favorite milestone and why Yes, my favorite milestone would be, I would say, you know, there have been several in my career. I'm, I'm lucky. I've had about 13 awards, uh, maybe 14 now, and with like 20 platinum and gold records. So I would say my MTV Europe Music Award, which is right there. Mm. Here, I can bring it closer. That's probably my favorite of them all. This was in nice. Europe. Yeah, this was MTV Europe. So it was in Liverpool, I think in 2000. And Gosh, I don't remember. 2008. Mm. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and this was uh, a huge deal. I mean, we were performing, you know, my song Butterflies, which is another Arabic East meets West kind of song, and we performed that live in front of, gosh, 27,000 people live on, on the air. It was, it was really cool. Yeah, it looks really heavy. <laughs> it is heavy. It is heavy. And you know what? They don't make them like this anymore. I think they, they've changed them around, so. <laughs> Let's talk about some of your favorite musical influences um, growing up. Who are some people that influenced you? Michael Jackson was a huge influence when I was a young boy. Um, I watched the Thriller video. Uh, you know, he turned into the wolf. I just, I was, I was just awestruck by the way that they made that video. It was more like from a filmmaker standpoint. I went to, I studied film in university. That's what I wanted to become. I wanted to become a filmmaker. And what's cool about that is most of my music videos were directed by myself early on in my career. Mm -hmm. So it was so much fun to incorporate music and film. Um, and I think Michael Jackson was the one that influenced that the most. Um, as you can tell, my latest single, uh, Wolf in the Night, which where I turned into the wolf mm -hmm. uh, in Toronto, pretty much like the wolf taking over Toronto. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was just it was totally inspired by Michael Jackson. So I have to ask you, you mentioned the word wolf and obviously your stage name is Carl Wolf. Where did you, where did that come from? The wolf uh, last name <laughs> or stage name? So everything goes back to my history when I was, when I was younger. Um, when I was in my high school team in Dubai, I, I used to play ball. I was a basketball player. So I was a porn card 
on the team and we won like 23 out of 24 championships. So we were like the hottest team and I was a starter. They used to call me the wolf because there was a movie called Teen Wolf yeah. with Michael J. Fox and he was the shortest guy on the team and they'd call him the wolf and, and, and they'd call <laughs> me the wolf and just do this. And I would be the fastest, shortest player on the team pretty much. That's mm -hmm. how I got yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> Let's talk about the importance of giving back for you because I always see you at all the charity events. I've seen you at We Day, uh, the Joe Carter Classic. So let's talk about, you know, you're an overall, I have to say this, but you're an overall really authentic, nice guy. And um, yeah, I want to talk about like why, what's the importance of giving back for you? Why is it important for you? You know, um, we're, we're in a position, you know, where people listen and people follow. Mm -hmm. It's really cool, you know, I never thought I'd ever be in this sort of, uh, you know, situation in my life. I mean, growing up in the Middle East, I'm not, you know, it's not a normal thing for anyone to have that kind of attention and people, you know, looking up to you at least, on some level, at least many followers looking up to you. So I think that comes with somewhat of a responsibility. You know, you win where you can win and then you give where you can give. I mean, that's kind of how my business model has always been for Lone Wolf Entertainment as a, as, a, as a whole. We make money where we can make money and mm -hmm. charge high for what we do because we deserve it. And then we help and support where we can as much as we can. Mm -hmm. And I think that it, it seems like a loop that seems to work. You know, we make money from here, we support from here, you know, mm -hmm. and it makes me feel happy. It fulfills me as a business guy because I'm still doing what I do. I know who to charge for what. And then I'm, I'm, I feel good as a human, you know, helping the world with, with how I've been blessed. So Yeah, it's so true. You have to give to get. I think a lot of people don't understand that concept. They think they just have to get things. But yeah. the more you give, the actually, the more you receive. So it actually all around is a good it's, thing. It's a loop. Everything yeah. in, in life and, and my successes and everything that I've had is always a loop. I, I'm never afraid of giving too much or it, it doesn't work that way. To me, it's like, it's if you give away something, something's coming back to you. You never be afraid. Don't hold on things too much. Just, you know, it's cool. Let go, it'll come back. Let go, it'll come back. As long as it feels right, because you gotta be able to wake up in the morning and every day excited about what you do. You know, yeah. I've lost so, so much money in this industry. I've, I've made so much money in this industry. So I'm not afraid, you know, I'm, I'm just, I know that there's it's a loop. It's just a constant loop. Just keep doing and it'll come back. Yeah, and as you mentioned, you've been very successful in this industry, and there are so many artists that want to do what you are doing, and you know, have a hit Spotify track, have a hit YouTube track, all of that, you know, and it's hard. So, what advice would you have for them, for someone that wants to do what you're doing? Honestly, I'm just saying, never give up. Yeah. That's that's all, because you never know how far you're away from success. Literally, with Africa, you know. It was two years in the making and, and no, like for two years I was shopping it and no label wanted to sign it. I had to go out and borrow the money on my own, you know, put it together, shoot the video. I mean, I was in debt to make that video happen and to, to, to make that song happen because I have to buy the rights as well. So, you know, people think it's made in the shade. Oh, Carl Wolf with Africa, you, you know, blew up with that. No, it was, it was no one touching it for two and a half years mm -hmm. and nobody cared. Mm -hmm. So I had to believe in myself. You know, and that comes from not giving up, you know, being almost like, I wouldn't say stubborn, but on some level, stubborn about what you feel deep inside. If you really believe in something and you think it's got, you know, I, I obviously always, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm smart. I, I get people around me, not that I'm smart. I'm, I'm just smart about the way I go about it. Mm -hmm. I, I get people who I, who I trust around me as well. I've got a good team. Having a good team is very important. You know, they, they big you up, but they also, you know, they do things that you don't know how to do or, or you don't know how to do as well. And you got to surround yourself with people who are smarter than you on some level. So I have a great team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do have a great team for sure. Shout out to Pascal and as well for uh, for uh, Mitch Karine. as well for, for <laughs> and Karine. Karine yes. Mitch, yeah. every, you know, the whole team, you know, Romeo. I mean, I can name, I've got so many people on my team. It's, it's amazing. And, and they've always, they've been with me for 10, 10 plus years. Yeah. So I'm lucky. Yeah, and they're great people. And also, it's so true about not giving up. It's just constant determination. All of the people that usually succeed are the ones that never give up. They keep doing it, and eventually, success happens. You know, once and you, you know, don't. The give goal up. to that, the goal to that is is just love what you do because then you'll always keep doing it because you love it. You won't do it for the success and the money. That's not where my goal's ever been. My goal is mm -hmm. just making incredible music, seeing people happy with my music, and I know that money comes about 
when those things happen. So create gr greatness in a way and, the, and, and, and money will follow. You see what I'm saying? But the passion has to be there first. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, passion has to be there because if it's not, you will go crazy. When you're passionate about something, you keep working hard for it until it happens. And I definitely get that sense from you. Even when you perform, you're always really excited. The energy's up, so you can definitely feel your passion. I want to talk about your new single. And I know you uh, paired up with Cardinal, so let's talk about that. Oh yeah, Wolf in the Night, you know, um, it, it came out very excited. You know, we've had three, four, what, three singles together. This is the fourth one and they've all gone gold, you know? So every song I do with Cardi gets a lot of attention and, and it's just cool. I think we have a cool chemistry. I'm, my art is so different than his. And, you know, I don't know, there's something that works between us two. And I'm glad, I, I love the guy. I think he's a genius anyways. He's a great writer. His, his you know, his lyrics are incredible. His, just the way, his metaphors and the way he rhymes with it. Just a very clever guy. And I'm proud to be uh, on a track with him. Yeah. And last but not least, I want to ask you, what's, who's one celebrity you would like to collab with? Um, you know, back in the day, not even back in the day, I still would love to collab with Akon because he's such a great, um, you know, melodic, you know, singer, songwriter, producer, uh, philanthropist, everything. He's, you know, it's, some, it's people who I look up to, I guess, who I would want to, you know, make a song with. From a vocal standpoint, from someone who's super, super talented, um, these days, it's, it's, it's tricky. There's not a lot of artists that I love these days. It's, it's really, oh, you know who I, I would love to do something with? Um, Phil Collins. I would oh, do, wow. love to do stuff with, with older artists who, were, who made it such a dent in my life, you know, in the past. I think that would be so cool. Yeah, that would be a very unique sound. I would like to see Can that. Can you feel <laughs> the love tonight? I don't know. Could be something cool. <laughs> I could see it. I could see it. And now that you put it in the universe, it's probably going to happen, right? <laughs> Law of attraction. Imagine he gives me a call. You'll call. You want to do something, mate? Right? I'll be like, <laughs> Anything's possible. So I know you have a new album dropping. So let's talk about that. And let's talk about your successful TikTok. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, TikTok has been something that I've just gotten into about six, seven months ago. And it's blowing up right now. I've got a song that's coming out on November 6th called Getaway. And it's my first house track that I'm producing. So wow. I'm not a DJ by any chance, but I'm, I I, I'm a producer. So I, you know, I'm, I'm messing with that. It took me like 10 minutes to produce this track. Fastest track I've ever done. It's blowing up on TikTok. It's called Getaway and it's coming out on November 6th. Actually, I did see some people recreating your dance on TikTok. Let's talk about that. Absolutely. There was a song called Stay Home, which is the uh, yes, remake of the Say So, Dojo Cat's Say So. That was huge during the quarantine mm -hmm. um, at the beginning. Um, but I, I, there's another song that I did was, uh, it's called Speaking English mm -hmm. and that's going massive. It's got 7.2 million um, <clears throat> views on TikTok and almost 600,000 videos done from it, like wow. people dancing to it. So we put that out on Spotify as well. So that's making some moves, but I'm excited about the new one. It's called Getaway coming out uh, November 6th. So, you know, there's a whole new marketing strategy to music and you got to be innovative, man. You got to constantly change it and TikTok is a huge way to market your music these days. Definitely. TikTok is definitely on trend. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, thank you Carl so much for being on the show today and making this happen. I really appreciate it and come back anytime. Thank you so much for having me though, Derek. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live to YouTube and Facebook.